What's going on everyone? My name is Kodomar and welcome back to Electronics episode 10. In this episode we are going to learn all about breadboards. Breadboards are really really important to understand, so if you have any questions whatsoever throughout this tutorial, leave them down below in the comments. And at the end of this video we are even going to rebuild the circuit that we built in episode 8, on the breadboard, so stay tuned. Here I have an image that represents a breadboard. Now you already saw a breadboard in the previous video, so if you forget what it looked like, go back to that video and you can check it out. And this is just kind of a quick diagram. Basically all of these little circles here are little holes that you can input a wire into. You can plug a wire into each one of the little holes on the breadboard. Now these holes are connected in specific ways that allow you to create circuits. First, let's take a look at the power rails. Basically, this area up here and the breadboard in this area down here. These are called power rails or buses. And they're basically really long strips of metal. So what I mean by that is the power rail up here, basically all of these holes that I'm highlighting in green, all of those holes throughout the whole entire breadboard are all connected to each other. That means if I plug a wire into this hole and I plug a wire into this hole, they're basically on the same wire because there's a metal piece connecting all of these holes together. So that would make a connection. These two wires in these two holes would be connected to each other. And that goes the same for the row below it. All of these holes that I'm highlighting are also connected to each other. So if we plugged a hole or plugged a wire into here and into here, they're connected to each other. They make a connection. But these two rails are separate because if we plug a wire into this hole right here, and we also plug a wire into this hole, those two wires are not connected. They are not connected. Because remember, only this row up here are connected to each other and this row down here are connected to each other. That's the only things that those holes are connected with. And it works the exact same for the power rail or bus down in this end too. So basically on the edges of almost every breadboard, not all of them, but almost every breadboard, you have power rails that basically extend down the whole board connecting all of those holes. And that's generally where you plug in your battery source. So generally you would plug in the positive terminal of your battery here and the negative terminal of your battery right here. That way you can get power throughout the whole length of your breadboard. Alright, now let's talk about the part that you're really going to be using a lot. And that is this main part of the breadboard here. These two rows of a bunch of holes. Most breadboards like this one and the ones that I'm going to be using have five holes in every row, like so as you can see. Basically every five holes are connected. So these five holes right here are all connected. These five holes right here, they're all connected as well. These five holes are all connected. These five holes are all connected and it goes like that all the way down in rows. These five holes, right? These five holes right here, etc. However, these two sections, this uh, upper section right here and this lower section are separate from each other. So if I plugged a wire into this hole right here and I plugged a wire into this hole right here, they are not connected. However, if I plugged a wire into this hole right here and a wire into this hole right here, they are connected. So basically every five holes in a little row like this, they're connected by a little metal strip within the breadboard, so any wires you plug into them will be connected. On the other hand, if you try connecting wires the opposite way, so we plug a wire into this hole, and we plug a wire into this hole right here, they are not connected, because these middle areas are only connected in rows that go extend um, up and down like so. I really hope that I'm making this clear. I know I'm not the best explainer when it comes to physical objects like a breadboard. I hope I'm explaining it good enough. Basically, every five holes are connected by a little metal strip, so anything you plug into them will be on the same wire, pretty much. And the power rails extend for the length of the breadboard, and they have a long metal strip within the breadboard as well. Again, I hope I made that clear. If you have any questions whatsoever, please let me know down below in the comments. Now, let's move on to the actual circuit building on a breadboard and how we actually build a circuit on a breadboard. Alright, so now that we know exactly how a breadboard is laid out and how they kind of work, let's build the same circuit that we did in tutorial 8 on the breadboard. Here I have a 9 volt battery connected to a 9 volt battery holder, which basically just gives me the two leads off of it. I have my breadboard here my LED and my resistor, as well as a couple of wires just in case I'm going to need them. So, as you can see, on this specific breadboard, we have two power rails on basically either side. One is marked red and one is marked blue. 
And on this particular breadboard, and on most breadboards, these power rails run the metal strips all the way down them, like we've already explained. Whereas these little rows going up and down, just these tiny little rows of five little holes, are connected to each other, and they're separated on both sides. So these five are different from these five right here. I've already explained how these breadboards are laid out. It's just a little while until you begin to make sense of how all these connections go. Now because these power rails are meant for power, I'm going to plug my battery right on into there. The positive terminal of my 9 volt battery is going to go into the red rail, and the negative terminal of my 9 volt battery is going to go into the negative rail, or the blue rail here, on my breadboard, like so. And I'm going to zoom in just a bit so that we can see everything a bit more clearly. So now we have essentially the positive terminal of my battery connected to this far rail right here, up, running up and down, and the negative terminal of my battery connected to this nearer rail right here, running up and down the breadboard. Next, I'm going to insert my LED. Remember, the longer lead always gets connected to positive. So I'm going to take my LED here, I'm going to stick the longer lead right on into the positive rail, as you can see, and I'm going to stick the other lead into one of the holes on one of the regular rows on the breadboard. If I rotate this a little bit, you'll see that the longer lead is connected to the positive terminal, and the other lead is just connected to one of the rows on the breadboard. Now, of course, this LED is going to need a resistor, so I'm going to take my resistor as well. I'm just going to bend the leads a little bit. I'm going to attach it to, in this case, my negative terminal of my LED, and I'm just going to turn it around, and I'm just going to pop it into another set of five holes on my breadboard here, another row, like so. Hopefully you are able to see that. Maybe if I focus a bit more. There we go. The LED is connected, or I'm sorry, the resistor is connected to the LED, and then it ranges over, and it's really hard to see, and I, I really apologize for that. As you can see, it runs into this row right here as well. Now to complete our circuit, I'm just going to use one of my fancy little breadboard wires here, pre-cut and pre-stripped for me. And I'm going to attach it to the same row as the resistor here. So I'm just going to plug that into the same row. And I should be able to plug this into the negative terminal row, like so. And if it'll stay in there, we have our LED lighting up. So this is the same circuit that we created in episode 8, except look at that. It's much more cleaner, we didn't have to use any clips or hold anything with our fingers. It's sitting there and it's working. Now again, I really apologize if you can't see the wires too too well. So if you have any questions whatsoever on breadboards, please leave them down below in the comments because breadboards are your friend. You really need to get used to using them and how they're laid out. So now that we know about breadboards, we're able to prototype almost anything electronic that we want. So let's continue on with this tutorial series. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.